of Wisdom is a really interesting title because this follows up on something I've been saying since Breath of the Wild came out, in that it feels like the Zelda cycle is broken. Because the way this used to work is that a Zelda game would come out, and everyone would come, uh, come out and cry about how the last one was better and how this new one was a disappointment and how Nintendo doesn't know what to do with the series anymore. And then the next one comes out and the process just kind of repeats itself, right? Breath of the Wild kind of shattered the entire thing because this game was so undeniably amazing that people really had a hard time coming back and saying that Skyward Sword was better or was more popular or whatever. Not that Skyward Sword wasn't great, right, mind you, but when it came to Breath of the Wild, people were more willing to try and downplaying it downplay it using other methods, you know, usually complaining about the Ubisoft Towers or complaining about, like, uh, her saying Horizon Zero Dawn was better, okay? Like, there were a lot of uh, interesting things in regards to that launch, and it did feel like this interesting new direction for Zelda to take because it felt more and more as if people were taking the Zelda franchise as a serious threat to the uh, AAA industry, as opposed to simply just writing it off with every release like they had been, right? It's kind of sad looking back on it now, how downplayed Twilight Princess was when it first came out, in spite of being such a huge deal and such a, a major driving force behind, behind the Wii's popularity. But you... You look at what happened with Breath of the Wild and you see that although people have tried coming after the game, nothing's ever really stuck, right? Instead, they just had to like, every every couple of years, they just come out with some weird thing or make something up, you know, they'll complain about the frame rate or the content or the dungeon or the physics or whatever, right? They'll do anything they possibly can, the story, right? They'll do anything they can to try and downplay this release. And with Tears of the Kingdom, we got more of the same, right? We got people saying it was a rehash, it wasn't, that it added nothing new, even though it did, that it was a disappointment, even though that everybody loved it and it's now one of my all-time favorite Zelda games, right? Tears of the Kingdom was phenomenal, but there was this very big feeling early on that a lot of people were able to gaslight casual fans into thinking this was a rehash or that this wasn't very good or that Breath of the Wild was better or that they added nothing new. That was a really big push, like, early on with Tears of the Kingdom. And that led to this, like, really, really weird period of confusion where people were not sure whether Tears of the Kingdom was a good game or not, right? And this is where the whole nobody is talking about it narrative came from because... The people who were, like, talking about the game were aggressively attacking it while, you know, actual gamers were spending their time, you know, going through the game. And this is some massive open world thing, okay? Like, it took me, like, 70 hours to get to the end credits for First Years of the Kingdom, right? There's so much content to see, so much to do, so much to explore. Like, you would not be able to sit down and play, play through this game in a weekend. It wasn't possible. Okay, I took a week off to do it, and I couldn't do it, right? So when you when you really take that into consideration, you begin to understand why Tears of the Kingdom was hated the way it was, right? The people who were genuinely enjoying the game and playing it and experiencing it for themselves, they were not going on 4chan every day gushing about how great the game was. They were actively playing it. And so over a period of time, as more and more people started finishing the game and started like um, having their own experience in, uh, experiences with it and forming their own opinions, Tears of the Kingdom became this highly acclaimed popular thing long after Baldo's Gate 3 was forgotten, okay? Like, every gaming YouTuber came out with their stupid video essays, like, trying to say the game was a disappointment or whatever. You know, another five years from now, you're going to have essayists uh, refuting those claims, right? Because they were nonsensical right from the get-go, right? You know, <laughs> like, like there's just, there are just so many examples of 
just people arguing in bad faith or pushing a narrative or trying desperately to push this idea that Tears of the Kingdom was too similar to Breath of the Wild to be a fresh new take on the Zelda IP. And I, I spoke out about this at length because we got a lot of re-releases over the past couple of years, right? We got like Skyward Sword and we got Link's Awakening, right? Why exactly... What exactly is so bad about getting a game this similar to Breath of the Wild? In fact, like if you look at like how Majora's Mask was initially received, being so different than Ocarina, everybody hated it initially. So it actually does make sense to make something very, very, very similar to Breath of the Wild as an immediate follow-up for people who got into the series through that game. I think that was actually a very smart thing for Nintendo to do. But there were a lot of people who thought it was a mistake, that thought this was the last Zelda game ever on Nintendo Switch. And they started pushing all these really weird claims, like Nintendo doesn't want to do traditional dungeons anymore. And Zelda doesn't know how to tell a good story, right? Uh, they began complaining about like Zelda's role in the game and like uh, the mechanics not feeling enough like classic Zelda. You know, they began whining about like top-down Zelda. It's been a decade. Uh. And so like Echoes of Wisdom comes out of nowhere, addresses all of that, right? You know, a more traditional Zelda game featuring Zelda with unique, interesting new mechanics that are very much unlike anything else ever seen before. And immediately there was a script, a script flip, right? Everybody came out and had to say, try to pretend that they hated Echoes of Wisdom. It looked like garbage, the art style. Like how many people did you see who complained about the art style without seeming to understand that it was from the same team that did the Link's Awakening remake? You know, how exactly are these hardcore Zelda fans missing something so patently obvious as someone who has been playing in, uh, Zelda on the Switch. Again, this has been a real issue, is that you have all these casual fans who speak about like, oh, Breath of the Wild was so awesome, man. And then they don't play Skyward Sword. They don't play Link's Awakening. They don't play Hyrule Warriors. They don't play Tears of the Kingdom, even, in some cases. Uh, Angry Joe, I think, is the big poster boy for this. Like, oh, I'm a big Zelda fan now. Well... Where were you? Again, you didn't even cover Tears of the Kingdom. Like, don't give me that crap like, oh, Tears of the Kingdom looks too similar. Like, you covered God of War Ragnarok. Again, <laughs> like, you have no excuses. You cover Madden every year. Again, like, the cope in regards to, like, um, these Zelda games really needs to be studied because no matter what happens... You're going to see the same people whine and complain about nothing sometimes. You know, you know, I saw Mike Mate when Echoes of Wisdom was shown off, like, oh, they pussyfied it. They they made it for casuals. Well, okay, but Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are some of the hardest Zelda games in years. You know, in a lot of ways, they're probably the hardest Zelda games ever made. But are you a fan of those? No. Oh, it should be like Dark Souls. Dark Souls sucks. Get it through your thick skull. But anyway, like. The thing about Echoes of Wisdom is because it's it came out so soon after Tears of the Kingdom, because it was so radically different, because it was addressing so many like issues that people had with the Zelda IP, people really had problems transitioning from Tears of the Kingdom sucks and we want something completely different to trying to downplay Echoes of Wisdom, right? It's kind of awkward seeing Arlo trying to fumble his way into trying to like downplay this game because he's been he's been tra talking trash about the game like ever since uh he started playing it right but by the time he started doing that i had already finished the game made my own review and even made a video refuting his claims about the series uh, about the game right like oh the only way to get around is with a bed like no there are plenty of other mechanics like again the way it looks to me looking at like arlo's claims is that like he didn't get past the first two dungeons because you get the spider early on, you get like uh, the ability to fly, like you have all these things you can do. Like you don't just stack beds over and over and over again like like he says that you do, right? It, it was just a cope, right? To try and downplay like this really, really well-received Zelda game. And I, I do think this is the really interesting thing about Echoes of Wisdom is that because it was so re uh, short, 
because it was so much shorter than Tears of the Kingdom, people actually could get through it in a weekend, right? People actually could blast through it and uh, get their thoughts out there and talk about the game in depth and and cover like some of the things it did and didn't do and things like that. And it became really obvious that uh, the game was really, really, really good. And it was really difficult to downplay that fact among like people who were actually like enthusiastic about the product, right? You know, I said this, like, uh, I finished the game before Arlo even started, you know, like, and he's like, you know, people like him are some of the big, like, center, uh, they are the center piece of, like, the Pretendo thing right now. It's just, like, complaining about everything Nintendo does, you know, whether it's alarm clocks or, like, uh, not releasing Nintendo Directs, like, Arlo's supposed to be there, you know, <laughs> like, talking, talking all this trash, right? And uh, he couldn't do it, right? He couldn't damage control this game to the point where it looks like when he does finally release his review, he's going to look like an absolute idiot, okay? Because every at this point, like, every, people know everything there is to know about the game, right? They know about the plot. They know about the, the big twists. They know about, like, all the mechanics. And, like, you know, everything Arlo said is just uh, – says is just going to fall flat, I think. And I do think that, like, this is, I think, going to be a trend with Zelda going forward, right, is people cannot downplay every new Zelda game that comes out anymore. The reason being is that traditionally all you had to do in order to do that was just say, I'm a hardcore Zelda fan and I think the old games were better, right? That's all you had to do. And people would take you completely seriously on that because, you know, the original Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time, all of those were considered some of the best games ever made. So, like, this idea that, like, Majora's Mask wasn't as good as Ocarina, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, they were not far-fetched, right? In fact, there was a lot of truth to them. But at the same time, it didn't diminish the newer the value of the newer games, and it didn't stop the series from evolving and becoming better, right? Like, even though Ocarina is one of the best games of all time, Majora's Mask is a cult classic in its own right for a reason, right? There is no reason. Like, again, if you enjoyed Ocarina, you're going to enjoy Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, right? Like, again, there is a bit of a learning curve for Majora's Mask, right? Wind Waker and Twilight Princess made some uh, radical changes, especially Wind Waker. But as a whole, they are good games, but back in the day, you would have a lot of people disputing that. You know, I grew up during that time where people would try to tell you that, like, Ocarina of Time was a remake of A Link to the Past, right? You know, I know people today who will try to tell you that the NES games, Zelda 1 and Zelda 2, are the only real Zelda games and everything else should be emulating that. You know, how many times have you heard that line? You know, uh, when it came to Breath of the Wild success, like, oh, it does, it did well because it's more like the original. Like, wait a minute, but it's completely different, though. Like, no, but it's but it's open world. Like, but there's so much more. Like, it, it, it's people don't want to acknowledge that Zelda has consistently remained a high quality franchise, and that's why you so. You see these individuals come out and so adamantly claim that Zelda fell off at one point, that it stopped being good, that Enoma ruined the franchise. It's it's one of those things that used to work, right? Doing that used to work. But the problem is uh, this has been going on for so long and Enoma's nearing retirement, right? You know, we have like several Zelda games now. You know, people grew up with, like, completely different Zelda games than the uh, the original five, right? So now we have this, like, weird kind of, like, um, thing where people don't know, like, where the good Zeldas stopped, okay? Like, people legit grew up on, like, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. So when, when like, boomers like Sean Malmstrom try to tell you that, like, oh, only the first two Zeldas are good, like, people who know and love Wind Waker and Twilight Princess are just like, what are you talking about? You know, I enjoyed those games. I like those games a lot. And even if you're like me and you go back and play the original Legend of Zelda, you still see the value in Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. 
and most likely a lot of the subsequent games, right? Again, coping and seething about how Zelda stopped being good after on Arena, Ocarina has uh, completely collapsed among itself, right? Especially when you've seen so many other franchises like Halo, Final Fantasy, Metal Gear Solid, like fall by the wayside, while Zelda's remained very much relevant, right? <laughs> like you can't gaslight people into thinking Zelda is like a mediocre IP anymore, carried by its legacy, right? Like the reality is the series is really going through a renaissance and is really one of the best uh, ongoing video game franchises right now. And uh, that's always been true to a certain extent, but with the, with the changes they've made and the structure and just like the physics engine and stuff like that, like it's becoming harder and harder to deny. So people have to go to these crazy lengths to try and uh, downplay Breath of the Wild and, and like uh, every other Zelda game. And it's looking really ridiculous seeing these people like seriously try and tell you Twilight Princess was bad, Skyward Sword was bad, uh, a, a Link Between Worlds was bad. Like, and it, it, it's just getting to this point where a lot of younger people are learning not to take this seriously, right? And I really wonder at what point people are really going to come out and start telling these people to shut up. Because they've never really contributed anything of value at all to the discussion, right? They're just there to try and, like, downplay the IP and, like, prop up the things that they have nostalgia for. They're not there for an earnest discussion on what's good and bad about Zelda, right? Like, what could be better or, like, what they did well or, like... They're there just to, like, gaslight you into thinking, well, uh, Zelda 2 was a masterpiece, actually. Like, it's just... Come... On. It's just a giant, giant, unbelievable cope. Unbelievable. I um, I do think Echoes of Wisdom is kind of a milestone in this respect because this is a lower budget game from a smaller studio that was uh, put together out of like uh, plans to make a Zelda Maker game, right? Like instead of like the dungeon thing, uh, maker uh, creator thing they wanted to do, they just put this together instead. Like, for a game that had, like, a really odd development cycle, uh, an odd focus, like, it's a spinoff game, right? Like, this isn't really the big new Zelda game. It's something from Grezzo that they wanted to make, and it's something wild and different. This might be one of the more successful, like, lower-budget Zelda games ever. Okay, like, typically, um, the Oracle games and Minish Cap and the DS games, they haven't been as relevant as as their console ver uh, counterparts, right? So to see like something like this, you know, a lower budget Zelda game, you know, get reach, get such praise among fans for a lot of different reasons and seeing it do well, I, I do think this is a major turning point for the franchise because if we get major Zelda releases every six years, five or six years, and then we get these, uh, these spinoff titles, you know, every three or four, we're going to be like, just showered in great Zelda games, right? Like, just showered. And, of course, we have, like, you know, other projects like remakes and, like, other spinoffs from other 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 companies. Like, like it's it's not going to stop is, is what I'm getting at. Like, people really have this mindset that, like, Zelda was uh, only relevant because of the open world thing and it was a passing fad or whatever. And it's really not true. Honestly, like I do think we are on the verge of uh, Zelda becoming incredibly mainstream. Uh, I think much like with the Super Mario Bros. movie, uh, The Legend of Zelda is going to become the highest grossing fantasy film ever. Right. It is going to outstrip the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh, well deserved, I would say. Uh, it's going to be a very well received film among fans, probably not critics, considering uh, who we're talking about here. Uh, it is going to... Uh, really kick off this era of the the uh, the NCU, the Nintendo Cinematic Universe, you know, and uh, finally, finally put an end to the whole like endless comic book sequel crap, right? We're actually gonna get like actual genre variety. We're gonna get like all these really cool like adaptions of Nintendo properties. It's gonna be great. I I really don't think in this environment. It's going to be possible to downplay the IP like they used to, 
right? It's it's going to be like this really rough to do thing. Like they didn't even really manage it in 2023 with uh, with Tears of the Kingdom, right? They tried gaslighting you for three months into thinking it didn't do well and ha- isn't popular. Like you have people unironically trying to tell you that the game bombed after selling like 20 million units. Like the fastest Zelda- selling Zelda game ever. Oh, it bombed. Like it's just a cope. You know, you see people coping like, oh, more people bought Tears of the Kingdom than uh, uh, more people bought Breath of the Wild than Tears of the Kingdom this quarter. Yeah. Because it was on sale. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, oh no, this Zelda game outsold another Zelda game. The IP is ruined. Like, this is what I mean, right? This is what I mean when I say that, like, um, the Zelda cycle is broken because it's just, the IP is just so prevalent on Nintendo consoles. It's so easy to get a hold of. It's so like uh, cutting edge. It's so far above everything else, uh, everything else, uh, so far beyond what everyone else is doing right now. Uh, it has all these different genres, all these, all these different takes on the series, like, you know, like all this variety. And yet you're trying to gaslight people into thinking the game failed. Like it's like, it, it's not going anywhere. Uh, I assure you that as people uh, finish Breath of the Wild, they will go into Tears of the Kingdom. And if they are so inclined, they will start like, uh, questing outwards to other Zelda games. And there are a lot of options. Again, people don't seem to realize this, that I think after the success of Breath of the Wild, that a lot of people are getting into the franchise as a whole for the first time. And I don't think the idea of Zelda being the 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 best gaming uh, franchise and ga- uh, the best gaming franchise in the industry... I don't think that's going to be, like, uh, questioned anymore. Because that's always been a thing among, like, non-Nintendo fans where they just kind of laugh at the idea, like, oh, Final Fantasy was so much better. Like, uh, and it's just, you just can't do this, right? You can't just keep denying everything that Nintendo was doing right. You can't keep denying how much better Zelda is than the competition, Like, it really is making you all look like fools.